Now we bring you a story that delves into the heart of India's global dilemma as it takes the helm of the G20. We explore the impact of brain drain on India's global competitiveness and how the nation can use its presidency to attract investment and talent back home. Look at this next report for more. India's ascent to the presidency of the G20, representing 85% of global GDP and 75% of international trade, is a momentous occasion. But it's not without its challenges. According to Mr. Akshay Chaturvedi, the outflow of skilled individuals from India is a concern. He highlights the need for more high education opportunities and suitable jobs in India. Advocating for a global Vasudeva Kutum Bakam, which stands to solve this talent mismatch. By doing so, the Indians can win globally and this influx of talent will help India flourish and also attract individuals from other nations. Now, is there a single solution to counter brain drain? The answer is rather multifaceted. India cannot become a $10 trillion economy without exporting services making the nation a talent export hub. Additionally, the global Indian cohort contributes significantly to FII inflows. Encouraging these individuals uh, to succeed abroad ultimately benefits India, as they often return to play important roles in the nation's development. While India's rich history of a global diaspora has left an indelible mark in various fields worldwide, these global Indians are an integral part of India's story and should be celebrated. Leveraging their expertise and talents can further India's global influence. Recent policy changes like eliminating the need for residency extension are some of the steps in the right direction. With India's declining FDI, there is a dire need to create an attractive business environment. Contributions of international students who send FDI back to India is quite significant as well, even if it's not in a single large transaction. India's G20 presidency signifies its global reputation, largely built on the hard work of Indians worldwide. Acknowledging and celebrating this contribution is key to India's success. We will report beyond World is One. For more on this, we are being joined by Akshay Chaturvedi, who is the founder and CEO of Leverage EDU. Thanks for joining us, uh, Akshay. My first question for you is, how we've been talking about the brain drain that India has been facing. How do you think India can strike a balance between the global outreach and preserving India's talent pool? First of all, thank you so much for uh, giving us an opportunity to speak this morning. Uh, it's a very historic moment in a country's journey where we are uh, we are at the helm of the G20 presidency and so many interesting things are happening in our country at this moment. Uh, as we as we think about our G20 presidency, as we think about this new position we're taking in the world order, I think it's important uh, to realize that uh, as we move from a 3 trillion economy to a 5 or 10 trillion economy, uh, that is not going to happen just purely on manufacturing uh, that will need help of export uh, as a, a large part uh, in terms of growth potential. And within export, export of services is also going to be very important. Uh, when you think about export of services, uh, India's, uh, India is, of course, celebrated because India has a large population, which is largely young. And uh, having these young people available uh, to kind of uh, work as talent in the rest of the world, which is facing a great shortage of uh, uh, people, uh, that's a massive crisis, be it in US, Europe, Canada, everywhere right now. I think if, if, if India is able to solve for a talent shortage uh, for the Western world, uh, for the global world, I think uh, that will really help us solve a lot of things. And uh, second, I think this is a great chance, uh, say 30 years out, most likely, uh, maybe every working uh, person, uh, every second working person could be Indian. So I think, I think this this whole uh, opportunity is a great chance for us to kind of uh, go out and uh, take a pole position and uh, put out our supremacy as uh, working professionals, put out, put out our supremacy as Indians, uh, a, global, a big imprint on the global world. Right. Now, Akshay, we also a short while back uh, spoke about how there is a dire need to create attractive um, business environment in the country in the view of the declining FDI in the country. So in the context of India's G20 leadership, what specific policy measures do you recommend to revive this declining FDI? 
I think uh, there are two ways to look at it. I think the government is doing enough and more uh, to uh, move up FDI. There is a lot happening in manufacturing. There's a lot happening in uh, uh, be it in EV, be it in uh, construction, be it in uh, be it the yesterday the pact that you kind of signed uh, around climate change uh, with the Sherpa meeting. Uh, I think the F FDI impact also has to be kind of looked at with the balance. Uh, can we really build more global Indians uh, who will remit back more FDI? Can we really kind of have more Sundar Pichai and Satya Nadellas who are going to be celebrated? Uh, if you if you think about why so much FDI comes into India and if you kind of really look at the root of it, mm -hmm. if you really look at uh, why billions of dollars are given to venture funds to invest in India, it's also because India has this great impression. Uh, Indian people have this great impression on the larger world. And I think uh, as we have more Indians who are going to be celebrated by India and by the world, uh, more Sundar Pachai and Satya Nadella out there in the world, I think that is going to ensure that uh, FDI uh, kind of comes into India at a much larger pace than what, where it is right now. Right. Akshay, on that positive note, thank you so much for joining us on this broadcast. Thank you so much.